Hi friends, David here from Above AVL, and in this video, we want to take a look here at Learn Christmas Lighting at our NBG Pixels, and as we get into the season this year, or the off season, talk a little bit about, um, do some myth busting on the NBGs and how they fit, how they work, and what you need to know about them for your display. Let's dive in. <laughs> If you haven't seen, these dome pixels somewhat became the rage last year. They were actually pitched to me by a factory like early, early 2024 season. And then some different people came out with them on the market. And there's been some myths, some legends, and some misunderstanding on them that I want to clear up because, you know, when you get to see people in person at some of these events and minis, you start to hear about their experiences and go, hey, wait a second, um, what you're saying is not entirely right. And so we want to bust those myths today. So the interesting thing about the dome pixels in compared to bullet pixels is that these pixels are, in, our, in the case of our NBGs, are made by a few different factories. Now, you go, okay, that's not any different than bullets or any other pixel. But the difference is, between the different factories, um, the technology, what type of pixel they use, how they put them together is very different, okay? The molding that they use is very different, okay? And the reliability, though across the board, generally between all the factories has been pretty good, um, is definitely going to be different. And so if you've had bad experience or you've tried one brand of dome or, you know, there's a lot of other name of these, these white, these new white pixels, I would say don't, you know, dismiss our NBG pixels just because you've had bad experience with another, because there are very different pixels on the market that all kind of look similar, but can be different. So let's walk through some of the biggest myths that we see with these. Okay. First and foremost, people go, oh man, the early dome pixels, et cetera, they've, they've never fit into Coro correctly. They don't fit Coro right. Our NBGs from day one, from the first batch, have always sat in Coro. Now, our first batch that we did that is, you know, long gone, um, long sold out, when they went into Coro, uh, just to pull these out, they were shorter than the, the current batch of NBGs than what we do today. Okay, so they didn't come out of the Coro, and in white Coro, um, you saw a little bit more bleed. With these NBGs, little to no bleed, it's just a tiny bit, okay, and we'll include a clip here from our previous uh, video on the NBGs. The way these ones fit, just to show you, is that they push in, okay, and then they turn as long as your Coro has these keyholes. By the way, thanks to EFL Designs for leaving this at my booth at the Music City Lights Summit. I'm so now it's mine. But they just, you know, quick turn and lock in for any Coro that has notches in them, which most of the reputable vendors do. Okay, so look for that. Um, these are easy to push and easy to get out because you just turn them to get them out. The downside being, of course, occasionally one of them might turn a little bit and pop out. The smallest dab of hot glue will solve that, or you could zip tie it in a way that the wiring won't let it turn. Um, but honestly, that doesn't happen a lot. Now, in terms of the double fluted Coro, where sometimes you have literally two stacks of Coro on top of each other, and this is uh, for really large props that are designed for bullet pixels, which of course are heavier than the NBGs. In those ones, these pixels are going to sit back a little bit and they're not going to stick all the way forward. So if you get pretty far off axis one way or another and you're looking at it from the side, you're going you're gonna to see some weird stuff there. What about strips? Strips are where these things uh, really rock. I mean, in Coro, they're great because no gloves, no fuss, no hurt hands. In strips, though, they do a good job as well. The only thing I would say with strips is just that you can get them in pretty easily with just a punch in. It's really not difficult. You see me doing this here, okay? Um, however, <laughs> if you do need to remove one, and again, reliability on these has been much higher than bullets, um, but if you do need to re re remove one, it does take, I usually send the wiring um, side to side so the notches are tall ways against the strip, and then I press, 
and it does, it takes a little bit more effort. It's, it's more similar to getting a bullet out of strip. That being said, getting them in is super easy. Getting them out of the strip is where it's um, not quite as easy as um, pretty much every other aspect of using these pixels, okay? Um, you'll also see across the board, there's a variety of different wattage ranges. Ours are 12 volt and they're 0.15 watts. So they really consume um, very little power. Brightness wise from both our own studies and talking to customers, uh, we've seen most people say these stack up and are about the same brightness as bullets. Having the white lens means that colors catch a little bit nicer. So if you've been thinking about these dome pixels for the upcoming season, maybe you've checked out our NBGs before, um, and you weren't sure maybe because of an experience you had with another vendor's dome pixels, et cetera, I encourage you to give them a try. We've got a ton either in stock now or coming very, very soon. And um, you know these have just been great in my display, great for a lot of customers, and we'd love to help you get them. And I hope you've learned something new today. If you're brand new to this hobby, head over to learnchristmaslighting.com. We've got a free guide we wanna get into your hands, the four things I really wish I knew before I started in this hobby. And we will see you guys in our next video here on Learn Christmas Lighting. And of course, when you need gear at aboveavl.com for all of our Christmas products. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.